Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce, and in this video we're going to be talking about Octane Render 2026.1 Alpha. This was just announced um, apparently tomorrow, because <laughs> you can see the time here it is November 29th, released at 1am, and you can see where I'm at, it's November 28th. And so somehow I have gone into the future and seen this post and already made a video about it. So my company, sim-plates.com, we use Octane Render Engine, we use the uh, render network, which is their cloud render solution to render really high-end photo reel uh, backdrops for virtual production. So we have uh, we create the content that goes on these big LED walls, and we do it all um, with Octane. And so I am very very excited to see the new op the the new features that are available um, today. Here's the list of the major highlights. We're going to go through them one by one. I'm not going to read them all out right now. But the big ones for me are meshlets, which is basically nanite for Octane. You should be able to bring in hundreds of millions of polygons now and it work just fine. And they also have this streaming, adaptive streaming textures. So you can have, you know, a 100K image and stream it just on a single GPU and it'll only show you what's needed to be seen. So you can zoom all the way in and see cracks of the painting. You can zoom all the way out and it seems very seamless from their videos. The other thing that's real exciting is Gaussian splats in full path trace GPU rendering. So I've seen other Gaussian splats in different programs like After Effects or whatever, but I think that in Octane it's gonna be a much higher quality and I'm very excited to see that. So we'll go through all of these one by one, but uh, yeah, those are some of the highlights for me. The main one, the one I've been waiting for a very long time, very excited about, is meshlets. Meshlets is very similar to Unreal Engine's Nanite. It basically, in, in other words, virtualizes the uh, geometry. And so what that means is you can have, you know, an unlimited amount of geometry in your scene. In this case, what they show here in the video um, is, okay, the geometry here shows one gigabyte. They enable the um, meshlets and then they turn it on and then you can see it dropped it down to 290 uh, megabytes and uh, all the information, all the, the compute power goes way, way down. And so they show some different examples here uh, of how it works. And in general, it, the, this feature is not actually work in the build, so I haven't been able to test this yet. Looking at this video, it looks like it's a lot less buggy than, uh, <laughs> than Unreal Engine's Nanite. If you've ever used Unreal Engine's Nanite, you know how tricky it can be. So I'm very excited about this. We have very heavy scenes with, you know, millions and millions and hundreds of millions of polygons. So this is going to be a very big one. This is a good uh, visualization of it here that shows you when you zoom in and zoom out, it changes the the geometry, the, the virtualization of the geometry. So this is a very important feature that I'm very, very excited about. The next feature is virtual streaming bufferless textures. So this is something that allows you to have a massive, massive image and stream just what you need to see. So in this case, they're showing, if you look up here, you can actually see the resolution is 113,664 by 94,000. Um, so this is a massive, massive image and you can zoom in and see the cracks in the paint here and you know again it looks seamless it does not look like other game engines and such this looks like a, a a real solution and when you zoom out it doesn't need to load the entire hundred you know 100k image it just loads what it needs to see at the time uh, of render based on i guess the size of the image the next one i think is really exciting is the gaussian splatting so now you have Gaussian splatting directly in Octane, and I think this is going to have some major benefits over some of the other ways you can use Gaussian splatting. Because some of the other programs, um, they use you know real-time effects to do different things, but this you can actually use real uh, you know depth of field and uh, path tracing inside of Octane Render Engine. You can also take the lighting from the scene. And so you can add 3D objects and it'll use the same information from that scene 
uh, to light the objects. And I think they show that as an example here in a second. They connect the geometry here. And so this is not part of, these two objects here are not part of the, um, the nerf. And yet <clears throat> they're lit with the same, uh, they have the same kind of lighting that's coming from the nerf. So this is a very cool feature. The next one is per pixel texture displacement. And this one also looks like a, like a really cool uh, new feature. If you look at the old displacement versus the new displacement, uh, even in this image, you can kind of see it's a, it's a much, much better result. And they show this as an example. I think it's a really cool example, actually, where they go from this, uh, from this lamp. They, they zoom in on this cord and then they add the displacement here yeah here you can see that you can do some some pretty wild um displacement stuff the octane's displacement was already really good in my opinion um and this really takes it to the next level material x support so this is one that again was announced a long time ago and it's exciting to see it uh, finally coming into Octane. So now they have a, a, a full implementation of Material X and there's different ways you can work with it. And this one is actually in Octane now in, in the 2026 build. So you can actually go ahead and start playing with that in importing Material X materials. Uh, I actually started a library of Material X materials a few years ago when I thought, hey, this is the future. I should just get ahead of this and make my own library. Um, so I might actually resurrect that and see what happens. This next feature is one that I'm also extremely excited about. So neural radiance cache. So is a technique that allows for faster noise resolution by using a neural network that is trained at render time. So basically it's using AI or whatever you want to call it, machine learning, to study your scene and then denoise it in a much smarter way. And this looks very promising, especially with interior indirect scenes, which have historically been very tricky in, uh, well, with any path tracing engine. But with Octane, I've had some, some issues before. And so this one is uh, really exciting. These are showing you, I think this is just one sample on the left without it and on the right with it. And this is another one that, this one is implemented in the 2026 build. I've not been able to get it to work properly yet. Um, but I, it's a, it's alpha software. I have the older generation a 6,000. So it, that might also not be quite good enough. Uh, and also I may need to update my drivers, but this is one that I think, um, this one is extremely exciting for me because I do think that it's going to allow us to render a lot less samples to do really clean interiors. And the one I'm, I'm really interested to try it out on is nighttime scenes when we're doing our, our driving scenes at night. I'm curious if this method will help us get to a noise-free image much faster and <clears throat> and higher quality because it's actually not denoising. It's actually making the render less noisy, if that makes sense. So there's also a big update to the OSL textures. So now you can actually have a, a basically an interface here that you can work with using the OSL uh, texture shaders so I don't haven't really used this in, in my workflows yet but this does look very cool and then another huge one is the new AI modules and if I pause here for a sec you can see over here these are new nodes here so you can see Luma video runway image to video cling text to video um, open AI chat GPT you can see all of these new ones here um, blockade skybox those creates uh, HDRIs from just from a text I believe um, and, and also like Topaz. So if I just play this video for a little bit, you can see that they actually have, uh, and they have like comfy UI. So you can bring in textures down here. I saw here, we looked down here, you can see there's a prompt. So animate the scene in slow motion, especially the crashing wave. So this is an image and then you give it a prompt and then it creates the animation right inside of Octane standalone. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of very interesting use cases with this. I think it's also a big part of it is that you can send it to the render network and do other things with it. So I do use some AI, but for the most part, I have not done much with AI. I did a lot of tests early on. Um, in some ways I was an early adopter and then I sort of stepped away from it, not stepped away from it, but like um, um, actively moved away from it for, for pretty much everything I'm doing. Um, but I'm not one of those guys that says, oh, AI is not 
you know, that it's going to affect everything for sure. And I'll use it in some of my workflows. I think Topaz is the best. Is this one I'm really interested about? Um, it looks like in this case, you're just able to upscale images like that you're using as a texture. Not so much. What I'd be really interested to see is if you could just in render network or otherwise, you know, have your render, send it to the render farm, have it upscale automatically and spit that out. That would be very, uh, that'd be very cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of these AI models coming to Octane standalone be built inside of it. So I think that's a really, really exciting uh, feature. Another feature is trace sets. So I'm just going to read it out here. Trace sets allow geometry to be made invisible to other geometry. For example, an, an object's reflection can be hidden in another reflective object, or an object can be prevented from casting shadows on another object. Um, they've had similar things. You could use render layers to do these sorts of things. There's other ways to achieve the same thing, but if you look here, you can see the red cube is excluded from the reflections in the mirror, while the rest of the objects are still displayed. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you are an Octane user, you should be very excited about all this. If you're not an Octane user, you should be interested in joining the bandwagon. So if you are, um, you know, let me know, reach out to me, and hopefully I can steer you in the right direction. We use Octane for Blender, and then we go to Octane Standalone, and then we do stuff in Standalone, then we bring it to the Cloud Render, and that's how we render all of our stuff in Simplates. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.